None of these videos that I'm doing in this series is real easy to create. This one in particular, must a Christian be a doormat, is a question that I've asked myself and I suspect a lot of males have asked themselves without enunciating it loudly so that other people can hear. It's just kind of one of those things you talk about inside of yourself very quietly. Uh, there was a man named Leon Pottles who wrote a book, uh, The Church Impotent, about the feminization of the Catholic Church over 20 years ago, I think. And uh, he was remarking, I remember, that in Latin America, for instance, male attendance at Mass was practically zero. And I suspect things have just gotten worse since then. I'm not actually actually a Catholic myself, but I think that in all Christian denominations, it seems as though to be a Christian, you have to have this attitude that, uh, well, I'm for peace and nonviolence, and if you slap me, I'll just turn the other cheek. And, of course, that's a biblical commandment, but what does that mean? Well, that means that I want peace and I want to be nice and I think that that's really what's wrong with the whole world is that we're not nice and if one person starts being nice then everyone else will be nice too why wouldn't they if you act nice to everybody then you'll just get nice in return and um hmm you know there's a lot of evil out in the world and I think Christianity and Judaism are probably more aware of this than the secular culture, but yeah, we seem to have dropped the ball and kicked it into the far end zone on that one. Let me just, this is one of the reasons why I knew this one would be tough, because I wanted to talk about my own life in this respect. I think it's illustrative. I was born in a very, very... Uh, cloistered kind of household. We, I was very protected. We didn't have a lot of money, but both of my parents went to work at a time when that was unusual because they wanted to send the three of us kids to uh, an elite private school in the area, which they did. And certainly they're to be very commended for that, I suppose. But um, it didn't take very much notice of our social development or lack thereof in that atmosphere and for me in particular it was a slaughterhouse socially i knew i was among the country club set and i didn't know what i was doing there i didn't know what to say i didn't know how to act and uh, various kids at the school at various times gave me to understand implicitly or in so many words that i didn't belong there so I was already an introver introverted, quiet kid, and boy, I became 10 times more so. I became a really good student because I retreated into books and writing, and I got very imaginative. I just created these own fantastical scenarios and worlds, and uh, I lived there all the way through high school. And of course, when I got out of high school, I didn't know how to socialize with other people, so I plunged right into college. That was when the wild 70s were going on, and I was so unprepared to participate in that round-the-clock party that I continued to be very, very introverted. And I became a person who was very, very easy to take advantage of. Uh, I was a pushover. I was, by that time... Uh, a Christian too. I had started reading the Gospel of Matthew in about ninth grade and I decided that that answered a lot of my frustrations a lot better than um, trying to become a tough guy and push other people around. And of course I think that was the right decision. I, I think I took the right turn in the road. But at the same time you, you, can, you can be too much that way. And I was I was so much that way as a young man, I, I wouldn't stick up for myself. Most of the time I didn't know that I needed to. I didn't know I was being exploited or uh, derided until it was all farther down the river. But even if I did, my attitude was pretty much, um, 
No, I don't know that it was turning the other cheek as much as just, uh, I thought it was beneath me to, and I, I think too, this was a, this was a good, a good intuition on my part. I'm, I'm glad that I was this way. I think I conducted myself in a dignified manner. If I found out or figured out that someone was uh, making uh, sport of me or exploiting me, I would just turn my back on that person, walk away, and not try to confront him and pick a fight. That doesn't really solve very many problems in this world. It really doesn't. Uh, but I wouldn't let that person have a second shot at me. I wouldn't. Uh, they, I'll make another video later about forgiveness, which I think is also grossly misinterpreted. But I wouldn't, in the spirit of forgiveness, come back to that person and give him a second and a third chance to uh, just drive all over me and leave leave tread marks everywhere. But I I was. Uh, I was in my own little world, and it was uh, not necessarily a spiritual place. Sometimes uh, this world of imaginary illusion can sort of blend with the spirit, and especially a young person, you can mistake the two. You can mistake one for the other. Uh, I didn't. I don't think I really snapped out of it until uh, I was married and had my own child, and suddenly I discovered a different side to myself. Things that I would have allowed people to do to me when I was a young man, I would not stand by and allow to happen to my little boy. And it would happen, because that's what people are like. A lot of people are like that. Even people who go to church well, there's a pecking order because we're human beings, and this is kind of an ugly side of our nature, but we'll, we'll push a little and we'll see how much we can get away with. We'll feel other people out, see if we can exploit them. And when I saw people doing that to my son, boy, I didn't like that at all. And I would stand up for him in a way that I never stood up for myself. Sometimes I would shout, uh, I, would, I would get angry, and I would push back, and it had an effect. I, I wasn't ever happy. You know, you don't ever, at the end of the day, after you've done something like that, I don't. I don't come home at the end of the day and, oh, I'm, I had a good day. I really pushed this guy back hard. Yeah, you know, I, no, I didn't ever register that. I'm sorry that we have to be that way, but that's really what this little video is about. I think as Christians, we we do have to be that way. I, I don't think we should be that way. We should turn the other cheek in the sense that, uh, as I said, there's, there's no profit in picking a fight. If you know that someone is not to be trusted and is exploiting you, then uh, why do you have to get in his face and uh, intimidate him right back. If there's a way around that, take the way around. Most of the time, you, even if it's a job, quit your job and find another job. You don't want to work for that person anyway. Are you more comfortable knowing that now he's afraid of you and he's going to back down and you'll be able to climb the ladder? If that's the kind of life you want to lead, then uh, have at it. But I don't think that's going to be a very Christian life. Walk away. Find another context to um, do what you have to do in life. Try to steer clear of those people. You don't have to give them another shot at you, but you do, I think, need to just avoid trouble if you can. But when there's an innocent person, and particularly a child is a very poignant case, I think, when there's an innocent person who's being bullied by someone else, especially an adult, yeah, you got to step in as a Christian. That's your duty. Um, if you see a child who's, you know, and an older man is standing over him, maybe it's a sports team or maybe it's an angry parent at school who's, uh, well, you've made my little girl lose her homework or something, 
and he's leaning over the kid and shouting at him. You should, why, why would you stand back and just watch that? Go up to the man and peacefully at first say, this is getting out of hand. You're an adult and this, and this is a child. This is not appropriate. Back off. If you have the kind of person who comes right back at you and says, well, you back off, buddy. You don't know what this is about. Just get out of my face and bleep, bleep, bleep. Can't even say this on this video, but you know the kind of person, you know the kind of language he would use. And so you need to come back harder at him. And yes, it may literally come to push and shove. So maybe he takes a swing at you. And what do you do then? Uh, most guys, I think, who are bullies are not really very good fighters. If they knew how to fight, they wouldn't look for smaller people to push around. Um, you can probably, <laughs> if you have a little bit of martial arts training, you can duck that big roundhouse punch and get your head in his chest and give him about a dozen little punches in the solar plexus here, and uh, that'll make... Uh, most people just double over and try to catch their breath. And at that point, you can walk away and take the child with you. Now, what I've just said, you may be thinking, I thought you were talking about Christianity. This is horrible. You're talking about violence and fighting. Um, try not ever to use excessive force. There are times, I think, when you have to throw yourself physically into the fray, even if you know that you're going to get beat up. But uh, those are dangerous times, uh, really and truly, because in a lot of those situations, the weaker person who knows he's, he's losing might uh, really start panicking and say his hand finds a blunt object and without thinking what he's doing, he uses that because he's scared and he knows he's losing the fight, getting really battered and maybe something really tragic happens and he commits murder. Uh, we don't, I'm not advocating excessive force. I'm not, I'm not advocating any kind of fight to the finish. I'm just saying you have to um, know how to put up enough resistance to make a, a bully back off and to protect an innocent. And I do think that uh, as a Christian, you should probably, especially a man, I'm going to be sexist about it here. It wouldn't hurt for the girls to do this too, but it doesn't hurt to learn a little bit about self-defense and martial arts so that you can, when you need to protect someone who's, who's innocent and helpless, you can do so. Why is that so important? Because you, as an adult, can absorb abuse and turn the other cheek. You can reach a higher spiritual plateau. You can grow around that. But when you're talking about a young person, you don't know how that might affect his or her psyche just to uh, know that the adult world is this horrible place full of monsters that are going to step all over me. And the ones who call themselves Christians are just going to sit on the sideline and, and shake their heads and so, oh, it's terrible. I hope he doesn't hurt that little child, but that's all we can do is just stand aside and... No, that's, you're hurting that child more by not getting in there and helping him. That's, that's going to possibly affect that child forever. So prepare yourself. Prepare yourself even physically, and this applies even to nations. Sometimes we, we might have to... Uh, step in to protect a genocide. And this is a Christian duty. It's not unchristian. This is the sad, fallen, sometimes evil world that we live in. You do not have to be a doormat. You should not in certain situations. So, uh, hey, a lot of you will, I'm sure, disagree with this, but uh, feel free to disagree. But this is my view of the situation. A Christian does not have to be a doormat. And in certain situations, I believe he must not be.